Hello everybody, Kat here. For our final Christmas painting, I'm gonna be doing some poinsettias and I wanna show you how to get some flow to your painting and movement in your flowers. So I'm taking a nine by 12 sheet and I'm just connecting one corner to the other with a very loose swerve. And then I'm adding a few, I think there's two or three, uh, no, there's four, little stems where the poinsettias will be and I'll add to that later. So the first thing I want to point out is we often draw flowers dead on. So we draw this this circle and it look quite like what I'm doing there. It just looks like the the stamens in the middle and then the petals are evenly spaced and but if you want some flow to your painting try drawing an oval and then putting the stamen, if that's what you call it, <laughs> somewhere else in that oval. And draw your petals accordingly. So if the stamen is where I'm putting it right now, the, the flower is tilted towards the back. So then you can draw your, your petals larger in the front, the ones that are towards you, and the ones are to the side, they might even be flipped over a little bit or they'll be shorter and the one in the back, you won't see at all really, just the, just the, cause, because the pointy part of the petal will have fallen backwards. So now draw the oval shape in a different direction and put your stamen somewhere and go from there. Let the stamen and the, sh and the oval shape guide you. So I, foreshortening the, the petals in the back and the ones on the side that are towards me are going to look larger. And so this takes a little bit of practice, but you will get it. It'll make sense if you draw these circles and ovals, it will really help you. And you can also make a petal look like it's flipped over. Now you see, that's traditionally how we we draw a flower but if you want some movement to to the flowers this is what you this is the method you would use this is the easiest method i think until you get well versed and then you'll be able to draw it off the top of your head so i sped this part up because i am doing exactly what i just showed you except i did not draw the the oval or round shapes i just did this off the top of my head because I'm kind of used to doing it. And um, since Christmas, I've been painting a lot of poinsettias. So um, this will be the last one for the season. So if you notice some of the le the, the um, petals, they fold over on themselves. Uh, one on the top and one on the bottom I made. I think I made a couple going under and a couple, one going up. And I wanted to show you how to paint those later. So that's my basic drawing. And I kind of left the rest to, to, and I, and always try to try to work in odd numbers. They say it's more pleasing to the eye. And, um, I'm drawing just two stem, uh, just two stems there. I'm going to be putting, um, some pine some pine pine branches there so i'm using this hanamule paper and this is scarlet this this uh, paint that i'm using is scarlet and this hanamule paper it's 100 percent cotton but this is a fantastic paper for um single layer paintings i do find um it is very easy to lift your paint off which is sometimes what you want and other times it's it's hard to do layering so because you disturb the the layers beneath so um this is pretty much a one layer uh painting like i do add a little bit at the end but it's it's there it's really nothing it's not what i would call a multi-layered painting so when i do these petals i'm trying different methods because Every time I paint, unless it's for somebody who is going to pay me for it, um, I experiment. And I think that's something that 
we should all do because I, I think the day you stop learning is the day you should stop painting and try something else. Um, because there's so much to learn. So on the first flower, I just used scarlet and I used quite a watery um, consistency. And on the second flower, I chose to use some yellow. This is um, oh, Azo yellow that I'm using. And I'm using the yellows as the highlights, whereas on the other uh, flower, the petals are just the palest part, the, the highlights are the palest part of the petals. So um, I do like using the yellow as highlights. I think your brain registers the light with yellow, like yellow with the color, uh, excuse me, the color yellow is attached to light automatically in your brain. So you just know it's a highlight. And I'm trying to give them form. So when you're painting these, Try to think about, it doesn't have to be super detailed, but try to think about where it would be darkest. So if the petal is growing out from the middle, it'll be dark down there towards the center. And then the parts of the petal that are farthest away from you are going to be darker. So if that one is flipped over, so the highlight will be just before it flips. Now this petal here has is flipped over on itself. So I uh, painted only the inside of the petal. Do not paint that little flip part just yet because there I, I did it because it was pretty dried already. And I'm using my brush to remove some paint for highlights. I'm using a, a damp brush and I'm soaking up some paint for for some highlights. So to make that flipped petal work, you have to make sure that it has a different shade than the petal itself. So now this on this flower, I have a flipped petal on the left side. And I painted that little flip first because I want that to be darker because that is underneath the petal. The one above on the left that's flipped up on itself, I want it to be lighter because it's on top of the petal. So I hope that makes uh, enough sense to you. And if, if you ever have any questions about what I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, just leave them in the comments and I will definitely get back to you right away. Um, I enjoy hearing from, from you. The people who do comment, I really appreciate it. It makes my day. <laughs> okay, so here we're using the yellow again for highlights on this flower. So the only flower I didn't do that on was the top, the first one that I painted, the biggest one. And that's okay. I'm just experimenting. I, I'm playing around and I'm, I'm going to remember what I liked best the next time I paint a poinsettia. So... Now I'm doing the same thing with the leaves, the same kind of shape. So I'm using a, I used a blue and my yellow to make a green. So it's kind of on the cooler side. It's, it's more blue in it than yellow. And then I used a sap green, which is kind of a yellowy green. It's a bit warmer. So, and I'm alternating between the two colors as I do these leaves. And I'm just tucking them under a few petal petals. I don't want to overdo it um, because this is a, a, a video that I'm making. And so it can, it can take quite a long time to, to, to complete a painting, a, a nice painting, you know. So I try not to overdo the detail on it. So I added a little bit for darkness right where the leaves are growing out from underneath the petals and that is indigo that I added. So here with some raw sienna I am painting the the little I don't know what it's supposed to be maybe a little branch and this is what's going to give your painting like a little flow everything is going to have a nice curve to it and Sometimes this will get you started when you're when you're really stuck and you don't know what to do and you have this empty 
piece of paper in front of you and you just want to paint, just try that. Draw a, draw a curvy line from one end to the other and then build upon that and see and see if that helps you your your block. So on top of the raw sienna, I have made a brown with the red and the green and I'm just layering it up so I'm not completely covering that raw sienna and I'm darkening it so it looks like a like twine kind of I guess you would call it not not a branch but and these are are green these are a bit of the brown with some green and so it looks more I guess more natural and those are just the stems for the poinsettias now I know this is not how a poinsettia grows <laughs> it's not realistic it's just fun and this is burnt sienna and I'm just doing some pine branches here so again with this I use uh, uh, excuse me greens that are cool and warm and with this branch here I'm using a bit of water on my brush and I'm dabbing it up to expose more of that raw sienna and it's going to take on a rounded shape yeah this is my cool green so I alternate when I do pine uh, leaves or pine um, branches I try to alternate the greens to make them look interesting so right here the the worst thing you can do when you're doing a pine leaf is do something uniform like like equal distance between each stroke so what I do often it sounds funny like here I'm using a warm green on this second branch so I go one two three in one direction four five in another and then I count one two and then one two three and I go back and forth kind of zigzag them as you can see I'm doing right there and I layer up my colors so I start light and then I go darker and right in the middle here I'm adding some light green it's the light watery sap and it's just going to give it a bit of denseness it's just going to make the the branch look more full and I just keep adding my my darks as I go along and and uh it's a bit of a long it's long for me to do it I, I I tend to take a lot of time to do these and um and there you have it that's they look nice and full now and you can still see the little woody area in the middle which I like and they're all different kind of pine branches though so feel free to do whatever ever you like to do now for the center I'm using indigo and I'm using some green so, so that it's dark 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 and I'm going to do the centers of the poinsettias um, I wonder do we say poinsettias or poinsettias because for my whole life I've called them poinsettias and um, I don't know if I've been saying it wrong all my whole life <laughs> someone let me know if you know if you really if you if you know the, the rules now of course I paused and forgot to turn my camera back on so I decided to add another pine a branch and I painted some berries so basically what I did was I just painted red circles that are quite close to each other and then I mixed a tiny bit and I mean a smidge of the indigo into the red to do the shading so that they look round so you would just go around the edges and underneath and you would decide where you want the light to be and that would be the lightest part of your berry. And now I'm giving some form to all the petals. So in the center, I'm just making them a bit darker. It's just gonna give them a bit more shape. I don't wanna overdo the detail. It's not that kind of painting, but it sure does give them some flow and movement, doesn't it? it they don't look like they're stuck you know they don't look stiff they look like they're moving and actually most of them look like starfish to me <laughs> so if they had been in a different color then uh yeah i'd have a starfish painting on my hands so this is the metallic paint that i used um and 
I really quite like it. It's an acrylic that I got at Michael's. It's not that expensive. It's under $10 for sure. And um, I'm just dotting the centers, leaving some black to show through because when you when you leave the black to show through, it highlights the gold. Now this is called champagne gold and I really love it. It's not too yellow. And um, I just I just love this at Christmas time. Red and green and gold at Christmas time. Beautiful. So now I'm putting some swirls and curly cues all over this painting to keep the flow, to keep that and just my my creative juices were flowing you know I didn't wasn't really thinking too much about it wherever I thought the space could be filled I I did it with gold now I was going to do more pine needles and um I just decided against it I wanted to really wanted to go go with the the gold so I do some curly cues and I do some polka dots and you do what you like and it's never too much red and green and gold especially at Christmas is never too much it just looks beautiful to me <laughs> so I went into the emptier spaces and um, you know if I didn't like how something was starting out I'd change it you know if I started out with polka dots and I didn't like how it was looking then I, I changed it And it looks festive and it looks fun and it, I don't know, it just came from my, my, um, I wouldn't say, yeah, my gut, I guess. I, I hadn't planned this out very much, so I just wanted to share one last painting with you guys before Christmas. And, um, I know it's late, it's Christmas Eve today, um, so I, 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 I just hope somebody has time to have a peek. You know, not everybody's bus busy at the holidays. And so I'm finishing up here. I'm going to add some gold highlights on the berries instead of using white paint. And, um, and that's it for this painting. So here's the unveiling, my favorite part. I sure hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to my channel. And please have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy Watercoloring. Bye-bye.